So I'm currently on holiday in North Wales and I'm walking along the beach and I noticed that along the strand line there's a lot of things that have been washed up from the recent storms. Today I thought I'd make a quick video walking across the beach and along the strand line to see if we can find anything interesting to hopefully show you guys. My name's Adam and welcome to Nature's Go. First of all, for those of you that don't know, it's probably best for me to explain what the strand line is. The strand line is the kind of line across the beach, which the tide's point is the highest and deposits everything. So in this case, you can see a lot of seaweed that the tide has deposited, and this is where everything kind of gets washed up. It's the best place to look for firewood if you're ever planning a fire on the beach as well. Now with the latest storms, it's a really good opportunity to have a look through these, see if you can find anything that you wouldn't normally be able to find. Of course, it's really sad that these animals have kind of died because of the storm, but it's a really good opportunity for us who are really interested in this sort of stuff to come and have a look and see if we can find anything rare or anything interesting. This will likely only be a short video as it's completely off the cuff. I don't have any of my camera equipment. I don't have my tripod. All I have is my phone, but hopefully we can find some cool stuff. I've already seen a lot of things, so let's, let's get to looking. First thing to note is I'm finding a lot of these really big and really colourful scallop shells. I'm not sure of the species, I'll try and find it and put it on the screen, but they're really beautiful. Look at the pinks and the reds in there, and they're pretty huge, kind of the size of my hand if you can see that. But they're scattered everywhere along the shore. There's another one just there as well. Really cool. As well as those uh, scallop shells, there's also a bunch of oysters washed up. It's not that common to see oysters washed up. Um, so it kind of shows how vicious the storms were because oysters can kind of hook themselves to the seabed and they're usually pretty secure. So it kind of shows how horrible those recent bout of storms were. This is the heavily eaten kind of section of a spider crab. So you've got the two legs there, the bottom of the carapace. Um, not unusual to find them. Their breeding season's kind of spring to summer and you'll find them on the beach alive then. They'll be everywhere. Um, but this one is kind of obviously past its best and very dead. Now this could be connected to what we just found. This is the top of the carapace of the spider crab. Now the carapace is just a fancy word for the body, but you can see that's where its eyes would have been. Now spider crab tend to have these kind of short spikes coming out of each edge. Yeah, so that I'm guessing would have been connected to the spider crab legs and under carapace that we found just over there. Yeah, very cool find. It seems like the spider crabs really caught the bad end of that storm. Another carapace. Another bit of spider crab there. Spider crabs are pretty interesting. They spend most of the year in the deeper parts of the sea and then once a year between spring and summer, they'll come to shore or into the shallower waters and they'll mate. Now, during this, you can usually find them pretty frequently in rock pools and sometimes even on the beach themselves. I'll put a photo on the screen now of a massive one I found in Wales a few years ago when I was at university. It's pretty intimidating to see them up close because you don't really expect to see crabs that big in the UK. You kind of envision them being abroad. But yeah, really cool to see. It's just a shame they seem to have caught the brunt of the storm. Now, I would always recommend having a look along the strand line whenever you go to the beach because it's an opportunity to see some stuff you wouldn't normally see. Now, a lot of dead things tend to get washed up. So I've seen squid, I've seen octopus, I've seen dead sharks. I've even seen dead seals before, um, but also it's just a great way to find things and educate others. There are beaches where it is just seaweed and it's extremely boring, but especially after a storm, it is worth coming out and seeing what you can find. You might find something rare. Hopefully I do, so let's keep looking. This is a really good bunch of shark egg cases. Now, another presenter on the channel, Ben, is really good at IDing these, but effectively what these are, uh, they're called mermaid's purses. And you can ID what animal is in there based on the shape and the color. Basically, when these seaweeds are in the water and they're firmly held on, sharks will come along and plant their eggs and they'll wrap them round, as you can probably see there, wrap them around the seaweed and keep them secure. And then once the shark or the ray that's inside is ready, it'll break out the end and come out and hopefully begin its life. Now, I'm not really gonna be able to show it today, but occasionally you can find ones of these that still have the shark in and still have the egg in. What you want to do is grab your phone light and shine through and you'll see if there's anything dense in there, so either the egg or the uh, baby shark itself. Um, I can't really show it because I've only got my phone today, but this is, this is a completely empty one. Now I found a few just here, a few different ones, just to show you the variation in them. As you can see, this one's kind of smaller. This one, these two are different colours. Try to ID these and put what animal belongs in each egg case above them. Uh, I'm not very good at it, but I'll get some help. 
but yeah you can really see the difference between these and it's really easy to id them once you know it's commonly believed that things like cigarette butts or water bottles are the biggest pollutant in the oceans but it is in fact fishing net um yeah i mean this one's firmly stuck into the sand as you can see but there's more of that in the ocean polluting it than there is anything else uh, and obviously you can understand how fish and stuff get tangled in that easily it does wash up along the strand line and unfortunately sometimes there is too much of it to move obviously i can't move that that's stuck in there i could maybe move this little piece here if that's not stuck in the sand also which i think it is yeah so that's also stuck in the sand but hopefully i'd rather than be stuck there in the sand and not being able to go back into the sea than actually in the sea but yeah you'll find these sometimes huge full nets that have broken off of boats or just little small pieces like that big and they'll be everywhere like i said before that fishing net can be super tiny or extremely big but either way it's got to come out the ocean i've just spied this floating in the sea um i'll be honest it looks like an oil drum from where i'm standing i am hoping it's not but uh i think we'll go take a closer look at that see what it is uh, luckily it's not an oil drum but it is a bin i'd like to know how a bin ended up in the sea but unfortunately i can't reach it otherwise i'd take it off but hopefully it'll wash up and someone else will move it if you are going to come out and do this one thing i'd recommend is to bring yourself a plastic bag or a bin bag something like that that way when you're going along the strand line and you find any rubbish you can pick it up and bin it afterwards now, as well as the seaweed and the organism, plastic and netting gets pushed up here pretty frequently. And usually, if I were to plan this, I would bring a bag with me. But today was so impromptu, I kind of didn't have a chance. Um, but yeah, if you are going to do this, make sure you bring a bag. Get rid of some of that plastic that pollutes our beaches. I think this is the remnants of a moon jellyfish. Usually kind of harmless once they're out of water, but I wouldn't recommend touching it just in case. Very cool to see. Jellyfish are what's known as drifters, which means they don't really have much control over the direction they move, especially in strong tides, strong currents and storms. So what will tend to happen in storms is a lot of jellyfish will get washed up on the beaches. It's really important to learn about the UK jellyfish. Some of them don't sting, some of them do. And sometimes you have the Portuguese man of war come over, which is really dangerous, especially for dogs. But yeah, don't be surprised to see quite a few jellyfish in these strand lines. I have mentioned it already, but the majority of what you'll find on the strand line is seaweed. As you can see, it kind of goes all the way down there. I'm not going to cover these seaweed in too much detail because I do a series every second Wednesday at 6 p.m. called Life in the Rock Pool, in which we take a little deep dive, a one or two minute video, looking at plants and animals that live on rock pools and what makes them so adapted to there. We've already got a few seaweed episodes up, so if you want to learn more about our seaweeds that you can find all across Britain, go take a look at that now. I'll link the playlist in the description below. Now these things here, when I was a kid, I used to think it was like packaging for boxes. So the stuff that comes with Amazon, you'd put it in the box and protect the, uh, the parcel, but they're not. They're actually well kegs. Now what the whelk do is they'll find a hard surface and they'll basically spawn a load of eggs onto it. And they form this big clump, sort of bubble wrap like clump. They're really, really common and pretty interesting. You can kind of see each individual egg if you look closely. But yeah, these are well kegs. I'm still genuinely in awe by the size of some of these scallop shells absolutely huge i'm guessing this was a lobster but look at the size of that claw i imagine this would have had a separate section coming off there and this is massive this claw was the size bigger than my hand that's crazy i'll try and do species id the blue is making me think it's a european lobster but i'm not 100 percent but i'll try and do a species id and get it on screen that's really cool all from me today guys i'm sorry if this video wasn't the most professional or the best setup i genuinely just had my phone and like i said it was really impromptu we found some cool stuff we found that huge lobster claw we found the spider crab body parts we also found that jellyfish as well as some of those really cool scallop shells hopefully this has inspired you the next time you're on the beach to walk along the strand line and see what you can find if you do do that let me know in the comments what you find remember to like the video and if you've enjoyed the content subscribe to the channel to not miss any future ocean marine themed videos it's kind of what we're all passionate about, but there's also general nature stuff there too. So thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.